It is 9pm at Bukit Batok Nature Park and I'm here to see if there are any colugos around. Now many people may mistake this gliding mammal for a flying fox, a type of bat or a flying squirrel, but they are not. To tell us more, we have Dr Norman Lim, one of the leading colugo researchers in Singapore. So colugos are nocturnal species which means they are active at night and these mammals um, have a strong ability to glide from tree to tree. And because of this uh, ability to glide, many people actually think that they are flying foxes, which are true bats. And being a true bat, they actually fly and gain elevation when moving around. But for colugos, as a glider, they always lose elevation when they glide from one tree to the, the other. So they can glide from tree to tree just like the line of trees that we see behind here. And this will be quite a clear path for them to navigate across the landscape. So based on my research in the past, um, we know that colugos are found in places where it's um, forested in nature and they actually require mature forests. So it's unlikely that you find them in a park, the town parks or the HDB estates where it's more open and it's full of um, a single species of trees. Yeah, the colugos require many different species of trees for the source of um, food, which are leaves. Based from my observation is that when I first started uh, looking at colugos in the early 90s, we hardly see one, but over the years, uh, we were very pleasantly surprised that the number has increased. Even at Bukit Timan Nature Reserve, you can see the colugos on a very frequent basis. So every night we still see one and two, and I encounter them very, very regularly. In early 2000, we start seeing the colugos in this area, which is at Bukit Bato Nature Park. And at that time, we have also started on our reforestation program. We started to plant in all the trees to build up the canopy, build up uh, the species diversity. And I guess that efforts have uh, paid. Kologos will still face some threats based on the existing knowledge on their biology. So one threat is that, as mentioned earlier, they require good forests. So forest loss will be an uh, important aspect to the continued survival. And secondly, being uh, strictly a warrior, they always stay on trees. These gaps in the forest connectivity will pose a huge threat for them because if they don't get the trees which are close enough for them to glide from one place to the other, that's where they'll end up maybe on the road, on the ground and they may end up with uh, accidents. So when we encounter roads, we also have to look at the width of the road. We just make sure that there are tall trees on either side of the road. If the width of the road is wider than uh, the, what they can uh, glide to, we will uh, introduce uh, Kulugo poles, that means an artificial pole, because Kulugos are seen to uh, cling onto some artificial uh, pole as well. We are using things like GPS trackers and also uh, radio collars to help us track the animal's movement. And through that, over the period of uh, two years, we hope to gain a better understanding about their movement patterns. And from there, we are hoping that we will be able to propose some mitigation measures. We have this program called Coco and Friends. This is to introduce uh, young kids and the parents about what Kologo is and where they live and who are their friends. Oh, you, can, you should see the face, how they light it up and they are so surprised that they can see them right up close in broad daylight. <laughs>